Hello, my name is Oliver Uzioko and I welcome everyone who is listening to this presentation. Today I will present to you our work, which is a temperature sensor with enhanced response and recovering time. It is entitled Carbon Nanotube P.PSS Composite Based Flexible Temperature Sensor with Enhanced Response and Recovery Time. The authors of this work, as shown on the screen, myself, Oliver Uzioko, Yogi Kumarisan and Ravinda Dahia. We all are from Bendable Electronic and Sensing Technologies Group, BEST Group, from the University of Glasgow in the UK. I will go straight to the outline of the presentation. This is the outline of the presentation. And first, I'll be talking about the motivation of this work, the device structure and fabrication steps, characterization and results, comparison of our work with the state of the art then conclusion following the work, and then the acknowledgements. This is the motivation. The motivation of the work is as shown on the screen. Considering the fact that electronic skin is increasingly being explored by researchers and many are fabricating electronic skin which has multi-sensors, which is multi-sensory, and they are including all sorts of, uh, all, all kinds of, of sensors, including temperature sensor. We have uh, thought about it and we, we are considering having an electronic skin, which has a temperature sensor with enhanced performance. And the enhancements we are looking at is to make it, to have some characteristics that is similar to the transient receptor potential cell family, number one, the TRPV1 of the human skin. It is a receptor in the human skin, which is uh, uh, sensitive to temperature. So this to have, for this to happen, we need a temperature sensor, which is quite fast. So we need to increase the response time and the recovery time as well. So that is why we embarked on this research. We'll go straight to the device structure and the fabrication steps. So here is the device structure and the fabrication steps. We used two samples. Like I mentioned, we are comparing two, two temperature sensors here. The one fabricated with carbon nanotube, CNT only, and the one that is fabricated with CNT and PDOT VSS. So here in the fabrication scheme, the only difference is what we have in, in D, figure D. That is where the solution was drop cast. So different solutions, one that is just CNT and the other one that is CNT plus PSS. That is just the, the difference. So first of all, in the fabrication step, what we did was to fabricate mm, a hard mask. We created a hard mask, which will enable us to deposit metal using metal evaporation, e beam. And uh, this we did using plasis, use the plasis tool for this deposition. Step B is where the metal is, is deposited and we used gold. After depositing the metal, we now mixed a solution of CNT and uh, B dot PSS, and then it was drop cast between the two electrodes to cover the space. We ensure that it covered the space and did not spill over, that it covered the space between the two electrodes, as you can see in, in figure C here. So this space is where the solution is drop cast. So in the first sample, the sample one, CNT was used, and only CNT was drop cast in this. And then in the next sample, instead of using CNT, we now mix CNT and P dot PSS, and this was drop cast also, and the space between, between the two. After drop casting this, we allowed it to cure, and then it was a, encapsulated. The active region particularly was encapsulated using PDMS, so mixed PDMS, and then in the ratio of 10 is to one, and then we use it to encapsulate this region to ensure that the active region is safe, and also to prevent it being affected by the environmental factors such as humidity. After that, it was allowed to cure, and then we were able to take contacts using silver paste from the 
two electrodes from the two contact points, as we can see from figure F. So from this point and this point, we're able to make contacts so that to enable us to measure the output of this very sensor. So move over to the characterization and results. So for the characterization, we utilize the hot plates, a digital multimeter, a computer that runs a lab view program, which automatically controls the, the digital multimeter and also is able to log the data that is coming from, from this digital multimeter automatically. So figure A shows the results of characterizing the CNT sample, while figure B shows the results of characterizing the CNT low speed of PSS sample. So in the case of CNT alone, we can see that the temperature at 30 degrees, the response for the temperature at 30 degrees is smaller when you compare it to the one for CAT plus P dot PSS. The range of temperature that we considered was from 30 degrees Celsius to 80 degrees Celsius for both samples. We use the same temperature so that we'll be able to do the comparison properly. And we can see from here that the response is such that the CNT plus P dot PSS gives a higher sensitivity. The range is also quite uh, uh, high compared to the CNT only. This could be attributed to the fact that P dots, which is a, a conducting polymer, consists of P dot core. And this P dot core is surrounded by PSS shell structure, which is its temperature sensing capabilities based on charge carrier generation mechanism. And this sky generation mechanism enables it to perform better when you compare it to this, this CNT sample, which we characterized here. So this is the, the result of this temperature measurement. And uh, like I, I mentioned earlier, earlier we use the we use the temperature sensor, which is respons responsive to, temp to, to resistance. And the reason why we did that was that among all the types of uh, technologies which are used for temperature sensors, the resistive-based temperature sensors are quite known to have characteristic res rapid response. They also have stability, and they are, they are relatively accurate as well. So that is why we considered using CNT and CNT plus P dot PSS, which will also have these characteristics. And we feel this will give us a, a, the ability to also reproduce what we intend doing, which is the motivation, like I mentioned, to design a, an electronic skin, which has the similar characteristic like the TRPV1 of the human skin, which has response time that is fast, and recovery time, which is also fast. And from here, from this response, you can see it's, uh, it's linear, it's linear response for both sensors. For the one for CNT, we can see also for the same temperature for 30 degrees, we can see the percentage change for 30 degrees is nearly five, five, nearly four, say 4%, while that's for P dot PSS is approximately let's say 14 14 percent so and both of them are, are linear but the only thing is that for p dot pss plus cnt we have a higher higher change now we move over to comparing our results with the state of the art because quite a number of temperature sensors have also been fabricated so considering the state of the art what we have in figure a here is the temperature uh, sensor made of geo and p dot pss and then a, com a commercial com thermistor and the comparison here with our work which is shown in b our work is shown in b while the other work which is based on geo and p dot pss is in figure a and in this work they also compared their work with commercial thermistor and from what we can see here our response time here shows two 2.5 seconds and then for for the work which was done previously with GO and P dot PSS is approximately 32 seconds. And you can see the recovery time here, we have 4.8 seconds. And then here we have uh, in, the, in the one that was done previously, 
is about 120 seconds. And this gives us the, the, the confidence that our work has a fast response time. If you look at also the table which we have here, this table shows geo plus speedot. The sensitivity for this is 1.09. Their response time is 18 seconds. The recovery time is 32 seconds. And for reduced GO, 0 0.6, response time 1.2. But our work, when you check, is 0 0.64 for sensitivity, 4.8 seconds for response time, and 2.5 seconds as recovery time. So this gives us the confidence that this will help in the fabrication of an improved electronic skin, which has Temperature sensing characteristics, which is similar to the TRPV1 of the human skin. So in conclusion, we have fabricated and presented to you today two different temperature sensors using CNT and CNT plus PDOT PSS composites. Both devices show the enhanced response and recovery time, but the sensor made with CNT and PDOT PSS had a higher change in, in resistance about zero, approximately 0.64% 0 per degree rise in temperature. The sensor which we presented to you today exhibited good response below and above the activation temperature, approximately 43 degrees of the TRPV1 receptor of the human skin. And this gives us that, that confidence that using this material for our future electronic skin will lead to the fabrication of a biomimetic electronic skin which has quite good response in terms of uh, uh, temperature. The sensor has the capability for inclusion as temperature sensitive e-skin with human life functionalities which I just mentioned and further studies are being conducted to fabricate an array of the integrated temperature sensor with an accompanying readout to realize a biomimetic sensorized e-skin for humanoid robots. This is the motivation which I presented at the beginning of this presentation, where I showed uh, the electrode the scheme, schematic of an electronic skin and the robots beside it. And that is the, the idea, that is what we are moving to the next step, integrating this in the electronic skin. And then instead of fabricating just one single device, we will have an array of these devices and characterize them to see how they perform as, as an array. Acknowledgements. So these are the people who made this work possible. We acknowledge University of Glasgow and our funders, EPSR PH coding, EPSRC, and JWNC, where the Nano Fabrication Center, University of Glasgow, where most of this uh, fabrication are taking uh, place, who are providing the resources that we need. Thank you very much. This is Best Group, and these are the members of the group. And uh, I also acknowledge their efforts and all their contributions. You can email us at the email on the screen if you have any questions or if you want to contact us. And then you can also visit our website for more details or YouTube channel to see our work and then Twitter as well to follow us, follow the updates of what we are doing. Thank you very much.